So we have a lot to unpack today. And sitting in front of me are the three best Macs that I purchased out of nine over the past year. Now, most of us only have the budget for one of these machines, so picking the right one is really important. And by the end of this video, you will know exactly which Mac to buy. Now let's talk about the colors because this is a fun one. We have silver, space gray, space black, starlight, and midnight. I remember back in the 90s, there were a lot of Lexuses and Mercedes that were like champagne and gold. And every time I pull up next to one, there was always like a 60 or 70 year old driving it. And I remember the first time I ever saw charcoal colored paint on a car, and I believe it was a Porsche 911. And then that became super popular. And then we started getting colors, more modern colors, like your matte black and all that stuff. So champagne, starlight, is just an outdated looking color to me. And the M2 Air in Midnight was one of the biggest fails in Apple history, right next to Apple Maps. Right when you pull an M2 Air in Midnight out of the package, wherever your hand is, there's gonna be a smear on it. If you ever go to Best Buy or the Apple Store, at the Apple Store, they'll wipe it down. But if you go to Best Buy, they don't wipe it down. So you have this clean looking silver and you have this clean looking space gray and then it looks like a bomb went off if you, if you look at the Midnight one, it's terrible. And it's so bad that Apple decided with the M3 to do the same anodized process that they did on this new space black color because it makes it fingerprint resistant, not fingerprint proof. There's a big difference between the two. The new M3 Air 13 and 15, since they added the new anodized coating to it, if you get that in midnight, it's a viable solution at this point. If you're thinking about getting an M2 Air with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD from the Apple refurbished store and you're gonna get it for about 1400 bucks, do not buy the midnight. The M2 in midnight was a gigantic fail for Apple. And this isn't just my opinion. This is unanimous across the board. It's a fingerprint magnet. So all that being said, let's talk about the top three colors that are available today. Silver, space gray, and space black. Silver is the best at not showing scratches. It doesn't show fingerprints. It doesn't show dust and it always looks clean. If you do a Google search or a YouTube search for silver versus space gray, it's hilarious how many people struggle with this task. They're like, this is the hardest decision I've ever had to make in my life. First world problems, like they go back and forth. And if you really dig deep, which is what I did, of course, the general consensus that most people find is that they like the outside of the silver more and they like the inside of the space gray more, which I totally agree with. So if you walk up to somebody at Starbucks and they have a silver Mac, it looks amazing. So it's super clean looking. The Apple logo is black, so there's gonna be this really nice contrast between the, the black and the silver. It looks awesome. The biggest problem is when you get around to the inside of it. So here's what happened. I'm sitting in a dark room at night. My girlfriend is watching TV and I pull out a silver MacBook Pro. And I open up the lid and the chassis, the silver chassis is so light and reflective that the screen was reflecting on the chassis and then back up at my face, it looked like I had two screens. So I'm looking at this thing like, so I turn the brightness down. And this is coming from someone who has a bunch of space gray experience. I've never had this problem with space gray. With the silver, it was really bad to the point where I was like, okay, I need to send this thing back. So to test it even further, the next day I went to Starbucks. Instead of sitting inside, of course I sat outside and the sun was shining on the chassis so bright that it was like a reflector. It was literally like a mirror, a flashlight on a mirror right in my face, and I couldn't see the laptop. So I walked inside, I finished what I was doing, and I immediately returned that computer. I will never buy another silver MacBook Pro again. And I really wish that Apple was doing the same thing with the logo that they do with the silver. It's a bright whitish silver. It's not the same color silver as what we had back in 2013, 2016. That was silver silver. And then the new ones from the M2 to M3, that's more like a white silver. And this this isn't me, this isn't my eyes tricking me. I was at the Apple store and I was asking the guy, should I get silver space gray? Cause this is a problem. And that's why I'm bringing this up in this video. And the guy grabbed an M1 Air 13 in silver and he put it right next to an M3 Pro 14 in silver. And there's drastically different looking silvers. So the older silver is more silver silver. The newer silver is more white silver. It's a brighter color. I don't know if you knew that or not, but it's a thing. Now let's go to the other side of the coin, space black. It is the worst at showing scratches. If you get any scratches or if you hit the port wrong too many times around the port, it's gonna start turning silver because it's gonna scratch the coating off of it. It's the worst at showing fingerprints. You just saw that. You can see every speck of dust. You're gonna be wiping this thing down all the time and it never looks clean. So where it shines though, is when you're in a dark room. So same exact scenario, 
sitting with my girlfriend, she's watching TV. I open a space black laptop. All I can see is the screen. It's a black chassis. It looks awesome. And for me, that alone is the selling point of space black over silver. When you're outside, it's the exact same thing. I think the darker colors look more premium. So for me, the cheapest looking out of all of them is if you do an M1 Pro, M2 Pro, or M3 Pro 14 in silver, it looks like a kid's toy. It looks just like a cheap kid's toy. When you bump those up to a space gray, they look more elegant. They look a little more premium. They look richer. They look more expensive for sure. But then when you go to these space black models, I'm having to wipe smudges and dust off of this thing. The space black, it looks really expensive. So silver looks the cheapest and the more that you get towards dark, the more expensive they look more premium they look. This is just my opinion, but I'm not the only one. I've heard a lot of people on YouTube say the exact same thing. And I think that if you were to see them and hold them and live with them and buy nine max over the past six months, I think that you would agree too. Silver looks a little bit cheaper. And yeah, it has some really nice benefits. Never showing scratches, never showing fingerprints, never showing dust, that's amazing. But the amount of glare on that thing and the fact that they don't look and feel like expensive machines, it's a problem. What if there was a middle ground that had all the pros of silver, so no scratches or fingerprints and it always looks clean. And then it had all the benefits of space black, so no glare at all on the chassis, it looks amazing in a dark room and it looks more premium and expensive. The answer is space gray. All the pros and no cons. So the size, let's talk about that. Here's the conclusion that I've come up with. The size of the device that you buy pertains to the size of the person buying it. If you're five foot 10 or five foot 11 or taller, get the 16. If you weigh 160 to 170 pounds or more, get the 16. If you're smaller than those numbers, get the 14. It's pretty simple when you think about it like that. So imagine giving Shaquille O'Neal a 14 inch MacBook Pro. He'd probably hold it in his palm and go, what is this? It'd be like holding a cell phone to him. So a 14 inch laptop is way too small for him. Now I'm 6'1", 220 pounds. The 16 inch chassis feels great to me. The, the size of me holding one of these 16 inch computers feels right. This 14 inch Pro feels tiny. This feels more like a 13 inch MacBook Air to me. So the 16 inch chassis is gonna feel more expensive. It feels more substantial. You get much better battery life. The screen's better. I have more real estate to get stuff done. It works better as a second screen when it's plugged into an external monitor. The speakers are better, the trackpad's bigger, it's more comfortable to type in because the palm rest is a lot bigger. You get better thermal dissipation, better performance. I never hear the fans. There are so many pros to getting a 16 inch laptop instead of a 14 inch. And it's the exact same thing with the 15 inch Air over the 13 inch Air. On the other hand, I have a friend who's about 5'5", 130 pounds. And if I hand her one of these 16 inch computers, it looks huge. The 14 inch is a much better size for her. It's proportional to her body, like these 16 inch models are proportional to my body. So this is $2,500, this is $2,500, this is $2,000. And when I'm holding this 14 inch and it's $2,000 after tax, maybe 2150 or something like that, when I'm holding it, it feels cheap. It feels too small. It doesn't feel like a $2,100 device. It feels more like a 15 or $1,600 device. Yeah, the specs are amazing. It's super powerful. It's the size of the screen looks tiny. The chassis of it's tiny. The speaker grills are tiny. The trackpad's tiny. Everything about it just, it doesn't scream luxury and premium and elegance and $2,100. It feels a lot less than that to me. People make it seem like the 16 is so big. My thumbs are one inch. That's two inches. A 16 inch Pro is less than two inches wider and one inch deeper. That is not a huge difference, guys. Same height, one inch, two inches, that's it. 1.2 pounds. Now, the difference in what you get from that, I've already touched on. All the things about the 16, better battery life, much bigger battery, much bigger screen, better second display, better to type on, bigger trackpad, better thermal dissipation, bigger fans. You never hear the fans speed up. This M3 Pro 14, I hear the fans spin up on it all the time. This M2 Pro 16 and M3 Pro 16, I've never heard the fans turn on, not one time. And I'm doing the exact same task on all of them. All right, so let's talk about unified memory. Your system takes up about five gigs of RAM just to run. 
So when it's on and you're just looking at it, five gigs are already taken. If you buy one that has eight gigs, you're literally buying a Mac with only three gigs of RAM, which is absurd. Here's what that looks like. So you open up Google Chrome, and then you start opening a few tabs. Then you open up Microsoft Word. Then you open up the Messages app to send a couple text messages here and there. And if you do anything past that point, boom, you're out of RAM. You're gonna get that little spinning beach ball, and then you're gonna sit here and go, something's wrong with my Mac. No, you bought a Mac with three gigs of RAM. Unified memory is not better or worse than traditional RAM. RAM is RAM, more is more and less is less. Now imagine if you have eight gigs of RAM, four lanes on this side, four lanes on this side, and five gigs are already being taken up. So imagine four lanes on this side, we have three lanes that are taken up, so you have one lane for traffic to go through. It's like construction's going on, three lanes are taken up. And then over on this side, going south on the highway, you have two lanes that are taken up because they're doing construction over here. So there's two lanes that are open and, two, and one lane that's open over here, three out of a total of eight because your system takes up five just to sit there and just to turn on. You think when you start pushing this thing, you're gonna run into a bottleneck? Absolutely, it's a huge deal. People don't think about that. They think, hey, I have a, a computer that has eight gigs of RAM. No, it doesn't, it has three gigs of RAM. If you go with a 16 gig system, you're gonna have 11. So imagine 16, eight over here and eight over here, you're gonna have five. So three over here and two over here, there's plenty of room for apps, for traffic, whatever you wanna call it, to run through the amount of RAM that you have. Now, if you buy the new M3 Pro 14 or 16, you'll have 13 gigs to play with because those come with 18 gigabytes of RAM instead of 16. 16 gigs being the absolute minimum isn't just my opinion either. If you watch Max Tech, Art is Right, Arthur Weiner, Created Tech, or Just Josh, they all agree with me that 16 gigs of RAM in 2024 is the absolute minimum. By going from eight gigs of RAM to 16 gigs of RAM, which is a $200 upgrade from Apple, your machine is going to run three to four times better across the board. If you're already spending $1,000, don't you think it's wise to spend the extra 10 to 20% to have a machine that runs perfectly? Now, 16 versus 32, this is a completely different story. Max Tech and Created Tech both created videos comparing 16 gigs versus 32. What they found was in some tasks, the 16 was faster. And then in other tasks, there was no benefit to upgrading to 32 gigs. So my recommendation is that 16 to 18 gigs is the golden rule for 99% of the people on this planet. You don't need more and you definitely don't need less. So which model should you buy? Like I said before, I think 80% of the population will be fine with an Air 13 or Air 15, as long as you have 16 gigs of RAM. My upgraded M2 Air 15 in Space Gray with the 810 16 one terabyte, which is way upgraded. It was the only computer I've ever had where it got bogged down while editing a video in Final Cut Pro. The only one. Since the air doesn't have a fan, they run into something called thermal throttling. And what that means is, imagine a car that can go 180 miles an hour, and then the manufacturer puts a governor on it at 100 miles an hour. That's exactly what happens with a MacBook Air. Since there's no fan to keep the chip cool, the system will limit its performance. And this is not a problem with the MacBook Pro models. The M2 Air and M3 Air are lightning fast when it comes to getting up to 100 miles an hour, but when they hit that, they'll back down to like 95 and go back up to 100, 98 and then back up to 100, so they hit this limiter. Since the MacBook Pros have fans built in, they're not limited like the Air. They'll reach 100 miles an hour just as fast as the Air, but then they'll just keep going all the way up to 180 miles an hour because those fans are spinning to keep the chip cool and the chip's not gonna fail by going past 100 all the way up to 180. Now, I personally like the form factor of the 15 inch Air more than the 14 inch Pro. I like the size of it more, I like the screen more, I like typing on it more, I like the trackpad more. It feels so much better because a 14 to a 15 doesn't sound like a big deal, but when you're looking at a 14 inch screen compared to a 15 inch screen, that 14 inch screen looks small. It's almost like you're, you're crippled. There's just not a lot of real estate. The 15 looks so much nicer, even though it's a 60 hertz, it's not a Pro Motion. That screen is so good that I put them side by side. The Pro Motion, I can't even tell. If you're looking at a phone, if you have like an iPhone 14 or 15, the standard one, and then you go to the Pro models, the 120 hertz display on the Pro models is substantially smoother and better than what you're gonna get with Pro Motion on any of these Macs. So a lot of these reviewers on YouTube say, I can't live without the 120 Hertz Pro Motion. Just get out of here. It's not that big of a difference. The 60 Hertz on the regular screen and the clarity of the 15 inch display sitting next to a 14 inch Pro, 
Give me the M2 or M3 Air 15 form factor all day. The only issue with that computer is it doesn't have enough horsepower. It simply can't go faster than 100 miles an hour. And I need something that can get up to 130 sometimes, 180 sometimes. So for that reason, my only options are the 14 or the 16 inch pros. If you're gonna push your laptop with a lot of apps that you never close, a lot of tabs in your browser, creative apps like photo editing or video editing, I highly recommend that you skip the air and just get a pro. All right, so let's talk about the chip. My recommendation is that you do not buy an M1 Pro or M1 Max in any configuration in 2024. They're 2021 models instead of 2023. The resale value is gonna be lower. They have Bluetooth 5.0 instead of 5.3, Wi-Fi 6 instead of Wi-Fi 6E, HDMI 2.0 instead of 2.1. The battery life will be worse. Single core performance will be slower. Your web browsing performance will be slower. Opening apps will take longer. Restarting your computer is gonna take longer. Literally everything about the M1 versions of the MacBook Pro are inferior to the M2 and M3, which are both 2023 models. The benefits of this M2 over this M3 are, this is $372 less. It's space gray, which I like a lot more. The 12 core CPU is gonna be eight performance cores and four efficiency cores instead of six performance cores and six efficiency cores. This is gonna have one extra GPU core, so it's 19 core GPU instead of 18 core. Even though this 18 core GPU is a lot more powerful, it's just the difference between the M2 and the M3. Uh, the lower numbers on the M3 are more powerful than the higher numbers on the M2. And same thing goes with the M1. And that's where the benefits of the M2 Pro model end. Now, the benefits of this M3 Pro, this is extensive. So it's a three nanometer versus a five nanometer, better battery life, more efficient, it has 18 gigs of unified memory versus 16. The SSD speed is faster, so your read write, 4200, 5100 on the M3, 3400, 3000 on the M2. If swap is used, which it will be, it has 18 gigs of RAM, so two extra gigs, and it has a faster SSD. So the M3, when swap starts happening, this is gonna be a much faster machine. So the M1 chips, the Air, the Pro, and the Max, those are all five nanometer chips. The M2, Air, Pro, and Max, those are all five nanometer chips. And then these new M3s, they're three nanometer chips. So what that means is TSMC is the manufacturer. Instead of a five nanometer like the old ones, the new three nanometer is 30% more performance with 50% less power draw. So what that means is way more powerful and it's more efficient because it uses less battery life. So the M1, even though those have really good battery life, the M2 had better battery life and then the M3 has substantially better battery life because the process, you would think that five would be better than three, but it's the opposite. So a lot of people say going from the M1 to the M2 wasn't a big deal. It was a pretty big deal. Going from the M2 to the M3 is a really big deal. Going from the M1 to the M3 is not quite the same as going from Intel to Silicon, but it's pretty close to that. Now the Pro Chip versus the Max. The M2 Pro 16 and the M3 Pro 16 are powerful enough for 98% of the population, and I firmly believe that. I had an M2 Max 14 in space gray, and it had a 1230, 32, 512, so that's really powerful. 12 core CPU, 30 core GPU, 32 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gig SSD. So this is the most expensive of all the laptops that I purchased, M2 Max 14. So two problems, Max 14. <laughs> Big problem. And that thing had the worst battery of any laptop I've ever used. It was bad. I would charge it up to 100% and I would do just a little bit of stuff. And I'd look up and it was at like 50, 40. And I'm like, this can't be right. And then I'd do a little bit more stuff and it'd be at like 12. And I'd have to plug it in. And it was just blowing through battery. So the way that that works is when you're using your Mac, and it's just sitting there idling. If it's like a MacBook Air that has an eight core CPU and a 10 core GPU, electricity and voltage is going through all those cores at all times. Now imagine instead of having an 810, what if you had a 1230, three times more GPU. Even when this thing is idling and you have just Safari open or Chrome, two tabs, then you have like Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel open and that's it all those cores of GPU are getting powered and the battery is just blowing down. It's crazy. So people that buy a Max are doing enterprise level graphics tests. So I want you to think like Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks, Warner Brothers, Paramount Studios, 3D rendering, video game production, 
exporting heavy video projects multiple times a day, stuff like that. If you're not one of those people, the M2 Pro and M3 Pro in any configuration are more powerful than anything that you'll ever need. And I feel 100% confident saying that. These two 16 inch Pros and this 14 inch Pro, there's a reason why they're sitting in front of me right now. I push computers really hard. I cannot push these computers too hard. They're so powerful. And then for me to spend the extra money to get a Max, to never really use all that GPU headroom, which I'm never gonna use. These can do everything a Max can do. The Max is just faster at certain things. But the trade-off for that is you're gonna get terrible battery in comparison to these. So for me and for my dollar, I would rather have a computer that I don't really have to bring the charger with me on a day trip because the battery life on these, especially the M3s, is so good, especially the M3 16, the M3 Pro 16, that I don't ever have to worry about it. And with the Max, especially a 14 inch Max, you better carry around a charger with you at all times because it just burns through battery. Unless you know you need it, don't get a Max. All right, so we're at the point of my final thoughts. And this M3 Pro 16 is the best laptop I have ever owned. It's the best computer I've ever owned. And I bought it from iPowerResell.com for $22.25 after tax. This computer is $24.99 and after tax it's about $2,600. I got mine for $22.25. That's a huge discount. And I got it from iPower Resell. And it came in the mail direct to my front door in three days, four days, three days. Amazing. So this M3 Pro 16 was $371 more than this M2 Pro 16. And for me, this list right here is the reason why I spent an extra $371. Three nanometer versus five nanometer, dynamic caching, ray tracing, mesh shading, AV1 support, better battery life, 18 gigs of RAM instead of 16, a faster SSD, 600 nits of brightness instead of 500, Single core performance is 15% faster. Multi-core performance is 7% faster. The graphics performance is twice as fast and Speedometer 2.1 is faster as well. So for me, it made all the difference in the world. I was going to stick with this M2 Pro 16, but if I'm spending 1850, I might as well spend an extra 371 bucks for all those benefits that I just mentioned. So if you have $2,000 or more, my recommendation to you is get this computer right here. This is an M3 Pro 16 and Space Black that has a 12, 18, 18, 512. And it is an absolute monster. I give this a 10 out of 10. If you have less than $2,000, I recommend you buy this. This is an M2 Pro 16 and this has a 12, 19, 16, 512. And it's phenomenal and it's space gray. And I like the color of this more than I like the color of this. So I'm gonna give this a 9.5 out of 10. And then over here, we're going to have the M3 Pro 14. This is an 11, 14, 18, 512. This was $1,800 after tax and it's too small. <laughs> Space black, it's just too small. This, this reminds me of a MacBook Air. And these feel like $2,500 computers to me when this feels like a $1,500 or $1,600 computer. I'm gonna give this a nine out of 10. So 10 out of 10, 9.5 out of 10, nine out of 10. I really hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you learned something new. If so, please subscribe to the channel and give the video a like. If you have any questions, just drop it down in the comments and I'll do my best to help you in any way that I can. Also check out the description because I always put a lot of effort into that as well. I hope you guys are happy, I hope you're healthy, and I hope you have an amazing day. As always, thanks for watching.